What up, people? It's your boy Tech G in the place to be back with another quiz review. So, like I say every video, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, when it comes to these quizzes, every week, go to the community tab. I post a link to a quiz that you can take. And you take it, it's going to be on certain subjects. And this week's subjects were the CompTIA A plus hardware in regards to mobile devices, mobile device accessories and ports, and mobile device network connectivity. I post all this information in the community tab where you can um, take the quiz. And then uh, every Saturday, about five o'clock, we'll go over the answers. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So like I said, this week's quiz was on A plus hardware. We talked about, you guys go watch those videos characteristics of mobile devices, mobile device accessories and ports, and mobile device network connectivity. That's what this was about. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And shout out to Shuda. Shuda is on the membership. Appreciate that. You guys want to join the Tech G membership? I got three levels. You got the supporter level. Starts at like a dollar ninety nine. You just you know get your little badge and a shout out. Then I got the other one. It's called the student level. Starts at nine ninety nine. Basically, that's where I post all my classes. A plus, network plus, and security plus. All those classes are getting thrown up in there. And then I got another one called Scholar, which I written redid. Starting at like fourteen ninety nine. That's where all of these videos, these live stream Q and As that you guys can use to study. These are going all up in the Scholar level. What type of mobile device was designed? to be able to read books on the go. Would this be a smartphone, a tablet, a phablet, or an e-reader? So which one of these was designed to be able to read books on the go? The correct answer to this would be, this would be an e-reader. Now, here's the thing. Technically, all four of these devices, you can read books on. My iPhone right here, I got an app on here. I'm pretty sure all y'all who got iPhones, you know there's an app on there where you can read books from the Apple bookstore or whatever the heck it's called. If you got a tablet, like an iPad, you can do the same thing. If you have a phablet, remember a phablet is a combination of a phone slash tablet. As a matter of fact, if you got the latest and greatest iPhone, the really big ones, these are technically phablets, but we don't call them phablets because phablets just doesn't sound cool. But in regards to this particular question, they're talking basically about a, de a dedicated device. And that will be an e-reader because a smartphone, it may have a book reader app on it, but it's not a dedicated e-reader. So an e-reader this will be the correct answer for this. Next question. Which of the following are examples of wearable technology devices? Would it be a phablet, smartwatch, fitness monitor, smartphone, or VR, AR headset? So which of these, select all that apply, but which of these would be an example of wearable technology? Correct answer to this would be, this would be a smartwatch. I got one on my wrist right now from a, it's called a maze fit. I don't have an Apple watch. I might post a link in the community tab in case you guys want to check this out. As a matter of fact, I think my wife just bought an Apple watch and I was telling her why I prefer this Amaze Fit watch. That's what it's called. It's called AMAZ Fit. This watch, I only have to charge this watch up maybe once every two weeks. And this thing keeps track of steps, GPS, little things you can set for fit. It's like all kind of goofy stuff up in there. But I really like it because I only charge this watch up maybe once every two weeks, if that. So anyways, you got smart watches, you got fitness monitors. Once again, this could classify as a fitness monitor. But if you got like a dedicated pedometer that tracks your steps, that's a dedicated fitness monitor. And then VR, AR, virtual reality, augmented reality headsets. So you know virtual reality, you put the uh, goggles on, it puts you into the digital world per se augmented reality you might put some glasses on or something like that or just use your phone and you see digital images superimposed into the real world that's the main difference but regardless these are all examples of wearable technology all right which type of connector is proprietary to apple and can be plugged into your phone in any direction would this be a macbook micro usb lightning or apple pay so which connector is proprietary proprietary for those you don't know means it is only made to work with this company's products. So which one of these is a connector is proprietary to Apple and can be plugged into your phone in any direction? Correct answer would be, this will be the lightning connector. 
All right, so I got this little lightning dongle right here that I don't use, but if you can see, that's what the lightning connector looks like. Basically, this is Apple's version of the USB-C. That's all this really is, but you can plug it in either way and it should work. Which of the following is a security feature used in Bluetooth device pairing? Would it be a pin code, multi-factor authentication, biometrics, or clear text credentials? So which of the following is a security feature feature used in Bluetooth device pairing. So basically you're trying to pair a device. You want to pair your phone to your car so you can hear your music coming from your phone into your car. Now, which of these is going to allow for you to make that connection happen? It will be a pin code. You're oftentimes going to be required to enter some type of pin code. Pretty much almost all the pin codes that I've ever seen are like 0000 or something like that. But it's a pin code that allows you to establish that connection. Bob has connected his smart smartphone to the USB port on his laptop. He is using the phone's cellular connection to connect his laptop to the internet. Alice is using a Wi-Fi connection to Bob's phone to access the internet. Bob's phone is blank to his laptop and is acting as a blank. All right, so Bob has a smartphone connected to his USB to his laptop. He's using his phone's cellular connection to connect his laptop to the internet. And Alice is using a Wi-Fi connection to Bob's phone to get access to the the internet. Bob's phone is what to his laptop and is acting as what? Correct answer is Bob's phone is tethered to his laptop and is acting as a hotspot. So his phone is so basically tethering and hotspots are pretty much the same thing. It's just one is a physical connection and the other is a Wi-Fi connection. So Bob's phone has been transformed to what they call a PAM phone as modem. It's serving as his gateway to get his laptop access to the internet. It's almost like a router in a sense for you know, so similar to a router, right? But it's tethered because it has a physical connection to the laptop. And then Alice is connecting to his phone, which is creating a hotspot. So it's creating like a little, a little micro Wi-Fi thingamabob or personal area network or something like that. And she's connecting to his phone so her phone can get access to the internet by way of his phone. So basically tethered is a physical connection. Hotspot is just a wireless connection. They do the same things. A database on a mobile device containing bands, sub bands, and service provider IDs allowing the device to establish connection with the right cell phone tower is called what? It's be PRL, RIS, PRI, or PII. So a database on a mobile device containing bands, sub bands, and service provider IDs allowing the device to establish connection with the right cell phone tower. This is called preferred roaming list. So you guys are out there living your regular random lives, driving in your car, going to see your girlfriend, boyfriend, go spend some money on some BS here and there. You got your cell phone in your pocket. You're just driving all over the place. And somehow when somebody picks up the phone and calls you, that signal can miraculously find your cell phone. It's not magic how that happens, ladies and gentlemen. Basically what's happening is as your cell phones are divided into cells, hence the word cell phone. These little hexagonal cells, you go outside, you see a cell phone tower. There's like a hex, uh, an invisible hexagonal perimeter around that tower that before you get connected to the next tower. When you go from one cell to another cell, your phone is constantly reaching out and talking to these cell phone towers and sharing its information, which allows for your phone to be found in the event that somebody wants to call you. So when they call you, their phone gets routed through all the systems. It finds the closest, uh, I can't remember, there's an actual name for this place, but anyways, it bounces it to the closest tower and then that tower if it established connection with your phone, sends that call to your phone so that you could be found. But anyway, it's called preferred roaming list. 